Hello everyone and welcome to the Gumpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today we'll be taking a look at Bandai's 1-1000 scale Space Battleship Yamato 2202 version. This unboxing comes courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Plamo and Gumpla here in North America. With a private warehouse option, flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, and a vast catalog that is restocked regularly, they'll have you covered for whatever you need. When you're checking that vast catalog and placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save 10% off. Now with this being a Bandai kit, we can pretty much guess what the box is going to look like. You're of course going to have the name down towards the bottom with the scale, and this is the 2202 version. The 2199 and 2202 final battle version are slightly different. You have the red Bandai logo there. The Star Blazers 2202 logo, which is kind of the second season of the newer revamp that they've done. And of course the Cosmo Navy badge there to signify that it's from Space Battleship Yamato or Star Blazers depending on where you live. The Yamato is pretty unique in its design being much more of a traditional naval ship than a regular spaceship. If you're curious about this ship's design, I'm going to be doing a ships and stuff on it, so be sure to check that video out when it goes up in the near future. The Yamato is very iconic in its design work, and as a show in general, being almost as old as Gundam, there's a lot of history here. As we move to the side of the box, there's a lot to go over. For something that's not articulated, there are a ton of gimmicks. We have a lot of design work, we do have things like the cannons that do move and the wings that pop out for atmospheric flight, but generally speaking, those are the only things that move. This is going to be a pretty stable, solid, non-articulated thing. But there are a lot of interesting design cues, mostly being tied into the Yamato or the naval designs, and then some of the like weapons and such. So the box, of course, makes note of the front portion, both the top and the bottom, being very Yamato-esque, as would make sense. You also have the anchor, which in space, I guess, kind of works, because it's like a jet anchor, but, you know, whatever. You also have the guns, which do look to be articulated. You have the tower, where the bridge is, the superstructure, if you will. I don't think any of that stuff's going to move. You have all the anti-air guns on the side, and the atmospheric flight wings. Those will either be detachable or a moving part, we'll see once we get it built. The smoke tack actually houses missiles, which is pretty cool instead of a smokestack because it uses a wave engine motion gen wave motion engine instead. You also have some more anti-air defenses, some more of the guns on the back, or rear-facing guns, I suppose. Um, some of the like little bit of scoping there as well. You also have the little undercarriage that houses some of the fighter craft, and then the main engine portion in the very back. There's also an additional piece with this. You have the Yuganai, which is, I think, the ship that Kodai pilots in to the beginning of 2202. So that's pretty cool that that comes with a little version of that, plus all the little Cosmo Tiger 2s, which... <laughs> We'll see in a moment, aren't painted, so that'll be a fun little adventure for me if I decide to do so. But we actually get the actual gimmicks, the light-up gimmicks, the extra little additions here and there, and they look really good. Overall, I think this is going to be a really cool challenge for me. It's something I've never really tussled with, so we'll see if it's easier or harder than Gumpla, and maybe a little bit of both in some different ways. Now, once we get into the actual plastic, there's not as much here as I thought there would be. For a non-articulated thing, I didn't think it was going to be too crazy, but I did feel like there was going to be a lot of parts to this, just because like a lot of the little guns and stuff are going to be separate, like all the anti-aircraft guns. The turrets, of course, are going to have more moving parts in there. But the main body is just pretty much a solid piece, so there's not a lot of stuff actually moving. But there's a lot of little tiny pieces all over the place, so there are a fair amount of runners in here, but none of them seem to be overly complex, just a lot of small stuff that hopefully is held in together by a fair amount of friction and not by a lot of glue, but I do have some thin cement if I do need to use it, as I had to use it on the uh, Mecha Collection Cosmo Falcon and uh, Cosmo 
uh, zero. So there's a lot of stuff here, plus the additional stuff for the Yuganai, um, which is a nice, cool little addition for this. But overall, I'm kind of a little surprised for what's in here. Like, it is complex in its own way, but definitely not in the same way that, like, a Master Grade is or anything of that nature. It's just a lot of small parts that may or may not move, whereas, you know, a Master Grade is a lot of actual intricate engineering put together for part separation, inner frame movement, things actually being able to move around on the body armor breaks, all that stuff. Here, it's pretty much just what you get. <laughs> you have a few moving parts, you have some spacing for some LEDs, you have some clear plastic to run that light up to where it needs to go, and then the rest of it's pretty much just the main solid hull. So, it'll be interesting to see if I do need to do a little bit of glue work and maybe eventually a little bit of paint work. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what this is like, and hopefully I won't have to do too much of it, but Maybe I will do that in the future. If you guys would like to see it, let me know, of course. But definitely, the review is just a straight build. What you're getting in the box, as per usual. And then we'll kind of go from there. But I'm actually really excited to build this. I haven't necessarily been burnt out on Gunpla. It's just building Gunpla hasn't sounded it as fun as of late. So I was, <laughs> when uh, Danik, our main man behind the scenes, was like, Hey, you know, I think this would be cool. I was like, yes, let's try it. I'm down for something different. I've tried military aircraft models before and just wasn't into it. So I was like, this is kind of a happy medium. Let me try it and see. And of course, that'll be a big part of the review is how does it compare to Gunpla, but also how does it compare to your more regular military models? And would Bandai be able to bridge that gap and kind of fill a whole new role that they don't take on right now? But we'll see, of course, <laughs> when we cross that bridge. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to answer them. But other than that, I've been the Spicer here for the Gunpla Network. Please stay safe and keep on building.